This program is a joint production of the Kimokeo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowd-funded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org. Hello, Kakiaka no Maui. Welcome to the Kimokeo Foundation talk show. I would like to first uh, thank uh, Maui Causes for producing the show, and the director is Sam Small, and also want to thank Akaku Community Television to be able to voice uh, what we have in store for Maui. And this morning I have a special guest, and my special guest is uh, Ron Panzo. He's, uh, everybody on Maui know Ron Panzo in several different categories, and uh, I'll let him explain, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll briefly say that Ron Panzo is uh, an owner or co-owner and an, an, an owner of Nalus uh, South Shore Grill in Kihei at Azeka Makai. So I'm pretty sure you have been there. If you have not been there, please go there and see what they're doing. They're doing a great job. And uh, Nalus is also the house of uh, what we call Punana, the birthplace of Lea of Aloha. And, uh, and we're here this morning to share that uh, Lea of Aloha with you. And so at this time, I'd like to introduce my guest my brother, my close friend, everything, Ron Panzo. Ron, welcome to the Kimokeo Foundation show. Uh, and uh, we, um, I'm so I'm glad that uh, you just uh, returned from one of the Le Aloha, but I think the, the community knows of Le Aloha and they, you've received some things, but let's go back and uh, start with the first Le Aloha and how this all came about. Okay, uh, first of all, Kimokeo, I'd like to Thank you for inviting us to be on the show, and it uh, gives me great honor uh, to be representing Lei of Aloha. So um, the first Lei started uh, with the uh, tragic event in Paris, and um, you know, just watching the news and reading the newspaper and just feeling the sorrow all the way across the other side of the world. Um, it started with two people talking story and uh, saying, you know, we should send uh, Paris a hug next thing you know, the next words was, let's send them a lay. And then the next words to follow was, let's send them the world's largest lay. And thus, Lay of Aloha was born. Yeah, well, I think there's more to that than uh, the, the brief summary you say. Yeah. I think when you talk about individuals, um, I like to refer to um, you. And I like mm -hmm. to refer to, uh, what's her name, Sherry? Sherry Austin. And Sherry Austin, yeah. has, um, she also has a foundation and the foundation uh, supported uh, the Lay of Aloha to Paris. What is uh, the name of her foundation? Who is she and what does she really do? Because she does some significant thing with Lay of Aloha. Yeah, uh, her foundation is called the Cynthia Rose Foundation. And so um, you're right, that had a big role as far as planting the seed for Lay of Aloha because the Cynthia Rose Foundation, she had lost her sister uh, two years prior to the event that you know in Paris and uh, and then shortly after she lost her niece so her niece was severely handicapped and was very dependent on the mom so with the loss of both of her family uh, she created the Cynthia Rose Foundation and one of the things she started was uh, you know it was kind of a self uh, sponsored uh, organization and uh, she didn't she had limited resources but she printed out little stickers bumper stickers spread joy so that was her campaign to spread joy. And the other thing that she would do is she would have the kapunas up at some of the homes uh, make little lays uh, out of materials and straws. And then she would go around and hand these lays out to the community. Um, she was sharing a story where she does a lot of traveling because of her profession. Being a photographer, she has jobs you know, abroad. And she would always put a lay in her suitcase. And when she woke up, the very first morning at her destination, she would open up her suitcase, take a lay, and walk out on the street and present the lay to an absolute stranger. And the shock in her face would be, whoa, you know. And then once she explained, I'm from Hawaii, and I just want to share the lay with you from Hawaii, then people would be taken back and, you know, really touched by that gesture. Really amazing. And, uh, yes. and her profession takes her pretty much around the world because yes. 
I know that one of the projects of, of uh, her working with uh, the project of Father Damien, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, sharing uh, with the Vatican, um, Dale Zarella making a life-size statue of Father Damien to be presented to the Vatican. And she was the photographer on the trip, and uh, she shares aloha around the world. Yeah, very truly a, a talented <coughs> lady. In fact, you know, her works are at our restaurant at Nalo South Shore Grill. She's done a couple huge murals and a couple other pieces in it. It just sets the uh, the tone, the energy in that restaurant. So, yeah, we're really blessed to... Yeah, we, we don't mahalo her because yeah. I, I haven't seen her for a little while, but mm -hmm. we, can, we can share with her and knowing that uh, her Aloha spirit uh, lives like she lived with us. So, yeah. thanks to Sherry. Yeah. And then uh, yes, we, had, we had another individual by the name of Tim Laura. Yes. And, uh, and so explain about Tim yeah. Laura. So basically it started, you know, again, Aloha is pretty powerful because it starts with just a couple of people, a nucleus. Right. And then from there, it just catches <clears throat> like wildfire. So, you know, it started with, sh with Sherry and I talking about her lei. And then all of a sudden we said we should send a lei to Paris. They need one right now. And then we said, let's send the world's largest lei. So at that time, the concept we were thinking, it was going to be a flower lei. And so I did some math and I figured out, okay, uh, 5,280 feet <laughs> in a mile. And this is how many orchids we're going to need to fill that mile. So in our heads, we were thinking we we're going to string this with orchids. Um, the next morning, you know, um, felt really the conviction of this is ha has to happen. This lay has to happen for Paris. And I started calling a few people. And uh, one of the first people was Tim Laura. And Tim kind of said, I'm aboard big time. And he's with Hawaiian Paddle Sports. Yeah. And he does so much for the community as well. So he says, I'm aboard big time, count me in. But why are you guys going to make one out of orchids when we have the most incredible resource of tea leaves right here? And it ties us in with the culture as well. So awesome. it was Tim that brought that to the table, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he's, uh, he's really a, a special individual of sharing yes. the environment and culture with the Hawaiian paddle sports. Yes. And he, he doesn't just um, have a business, he lives it himself. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm really grateful that you individuals got this together because, uh, mm -hmm. and now, you know, we made the Lay of Aloha for Paris. And yeah. so then, then there was more to that because now we have the lay, and now what we're going to do with the lay, and how we're going to get it to Paris. Yeah, correct. So yeah. explain how this happened, because uh, you know the lay went to Paris, yes, and it, 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 did. it didn't go <laughs> it by did. canoe. Yeah. It went by airplane. You yeah. know here, so now you have uh, the most powerful cultural yeah. lay made around here, and now how we're going to get it to yeah. Paris. Yeah, it, it, you know, as, and again, as we just shared, I mean, Aloha is pretty powerful, and I think Aloha just shifted in gear because you're talking about, you know, we had a lot of more questions than we had answers, um, and uh, but it was just a pure um, concept of Aloha that was driving us to make this happen. So, and we just kind of took it, you know, day by day, moment by moment. And so the first thing that happened is we kind of got out there and made some phone calls. And within like two hours, we had raised $3,000. Um, a Facebook page was established, a poster layout for Paris, and a website. And from there, it was, it was game on. Um, by that afternoon, social media is so powerful as we know today. Um, the truckloads of tea leaves just started showing by, you know, from complete strangers. We had no idea who these people were. They didn't even know Nalu's at the time, you know. We yeah. were only a few months old. But they went out of their way, harvested teas, and drove them down to Kihei from the mountains and the valleys, and they found this new restaurant called Nalu's. So How's that? Leolo, Makuro yeah. Makai. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Having uh, Tim Lawrence say, why are you guys going to use orchid when you can use the most cultural thing that we have, the tea yeah. leaf around? Mm -hmm. You know, so we got to thank him for that. Oh, because for I don't sure. think that originally all of this... Uh, things uh, came to the mind of you and Sherry and Tim and it, yeah. because of Aloha, things mm -hmm. started, uh, Ulu started to grow yeah. and probably grow faster than, uh, than you could conceive yeah. and just was blessed that mm -hmm. you was able to get all these tea leaves and make the, uh, the mile lay. Yeah. You yeah. know, so Aloha is really powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, a total uh, Aloha was a love and besides that, you know, we had people that just came and stand by like they, they gave you uh, funding and yes. then besides funding, some people say, what are you doing, Ron? What are right. you guys really doing? And mm -hmm. when you explain them what you were doing, I noticed that you had people from all, all over yeah. area coming to um, say, hey, I heard you guys want help for make the lay. I don't know how to make the lay, so how okay. can I make the lay? Yeah. 
And yeah. so you had people there that was uh, showing other people to make the land. Yeah. And besides that, they brought their dogs with them. And now we get dogs, we get kids, yeah. we get yeah. ladies, we get men. Kapunas, making the land. yes. And so you had all the community coming to mm. Azeka Makai yeah. at Nalo's uh, South Shore uh, uh, Grill. Mm -hmm. And so that was, uh, that was amazing. So tell us uh, what kind of individuals showed up there because uh, you was able to share and sit down with them and yes. and uh, share the mana and the aloha why they're there. What yeah. they, you know, and some of them from Wailea uh, took mm -hmm. tea leaves that they should not have taken because they don't have the area. It's a common element area belong to the association. Yeah, but they <laughs> right. bought tea leaves like yeah. one bunch tea leaf or two tea leaves. Right. Mm -hmm. Some bought the most beautiful leaves and some bought the most worst looking yeah. leaves. <laughs> right. Yeah. And some bought the small tea mm -hmm. leaves. But you gracefully because aloha accepted all and said no you need to try entwine it to the lake because you brought right. it that's right that's right and and uh it's so true i mean tea leaves came from all over you know we had a call from kona at the time saying oh we can't be there but we want to send you a case of tea leaves from our backyard awesome yeah we had two women that came over that very next morning and they brought tea leaves from a very sacred valley in Kauai. And uh, they got on a plane and brought their tea leaves, and they were only going to be there for one day, but they stayed for the duration until the lay was completed. Yeah, you coming know. from Kauai is amazing because, yeah. as you know, they got to get airfare. Yeah. And exactly. they got to stop their job. Right. So they just dropped everything. Dropped everything mm -hmm. and said that they got to come. Yeah. And they got to be part of the lay. Yeah. But there was more than Kauai. Yeah. And then you started receiving calls, and people wanted to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And you received what kind of calls did you receive, and whom did you receive it from? Um, you know, the calls are coming from, from again, all over for, for Paris. And, and you know, um, the media, you know, we started getting calls from the, uh, first of all, Maui News, Maui Watch. So the media played a big role in helping us get the word out. And then from there, it spread to, you know, Star Advertiser in Honolulu, and then also KGMB, KID, KITV, KHON, they were all covering the story. And then all of a sudden, national news started, you know, giving us calls. We started getting calls from the Huffington Post, the Washington Post, Good Morning America. It, it was truly amazing. Yeah, well, you know, we got we got to credit that to the social media because mm -hmm. uh, how they take in this and uh, made the best of Aloha. Yeah. You know, not only in Hawaii, but now it was national and then now mm -hmm. international. Right. So you can you can truly say that the lay of Aloha mm -hmm. is internationally, nationally, and locally mm -hmm. had made a difference in. How do you gather a community? You know, Ron, I always use the statement that it takes a village to make a canoe. As you know, that I'm a, like mm -hmm. to paddle my canoe. I yes. love to paddle. And now it takes a village to make the lay of aloha. Yes, it but does. But it takes the whole planet to share the mana mm -hmm. from one side. So just a little place called Kihei Maui, just a little restaurant called Nalo's, mm -hmm. a little shopping center called Azeka's, you know. Yeah. And uh, so hopefully uh, Google Map now has us on the map. Yes. But uh, we, um, or the Le'a Aloha Kamini, uh, like you said, had uh, more questions than answers. Yes. But you had to answer most of this question. Yeah. So how did you answer the question of, now we're going to take the Le'a to Paris? So it wasn't a flight to mm -hmm. Oahu for the weekend. Yes, it was a long flight the across the, world. the planet, the yes. other side of the world. Right. And so yeah. how this was managed and how this was answered, yeah. well, because you see they had more questions than answers. Mm -hmm. But you still had a have the answer how to get the lay of aloha yeah. from Maui to f Paris in France. Right, right. But well, going back to that first day, um, Friday, when we started making phone calls and the website and the social media and uh, posters were established, um, you know, the magic started happening uh, so quickly. And by that afternoon, we had received a call and uh, we also heard about this youth uh, delegation that was going to Paris for the COP21 meeting. So we just went, oh my gosh, this is, I think a wink from Akua. He's letting us know that natural, this is yeah. meant to be. Yeah, it was meant a sign. Yeah, so we felt we had to reach out to them. And when we actually had met up with them, they said they were trying to meet up with us. So the both parties had this Came together. feeling, uh, that yeah, strong feeling that we had to work together. So their thing, they were going up for the COP21 meetings and the lay wouldn't be completed before they left. So we were feeling, okay, we would just UPS the lay 
up there, not knowing what we're dealing with. Because later on, we found out this lady weighs 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I know yeah. that really well. I'll explain yeah. that later. Okay. So that was, a, that was the understanding from the beginning. They were honored to be part of it, and they said that they would go ahead and present the lay to the people of Paris through the COP21 meetings, because they had uh, these uh, youth uh, meetings as well. There was youth that were coming all over from the globe. And we thought, wow, this is the perfect setting because it's about the future. It's about, you know, the next generation. Passing on the next generation. Passing it on, yes, as we know. Just but like our Kapunas did for us. But explain them the, the meaning. What is the meaning in France? You said that the, they were on the way to the COP yeah. meetings? COP21 meetings. What is, is that? Is a weather climate summit meetings, yeah, where all the world leaders are going to be there. Climate change. Climate change, yes. But these were the young leaders of the nations. Yeah. So they invited all the, the, the world leaders as well, President Obama. Oh, that's you correct. Know, exactly. Dalai Lama, you know, President from, you know, Japan and so forth. So, but they also invited the young leaders to come as well. So it was really So really one, of awesome. the, one of the young leaders was Ko Ilam. Ko Ilam, correct. And, and then there was a Kapu boy. Yes, yeah. What was his first name? Ah, I, Kiyomoku yeah. Kapu's son. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, Kiyomoku, but yeah. they were the leaders of going up. And, but uh, yet the question not answered yet. Yeah. How did you go from Maui to France yeah. with the lay? So going back to what you mm -hmm. told me about the lay was 300 pounds because, I mean, I, I later was one of those guys yeah. who carried the lay with Darren Robago yeah. to the lay of Aloha for Hokulea. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And we were stopped at, uh, we weren't stopped, but we were, we were overweight at uh, the counter with Hawaiian Airlines. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, Hawaiian Airlines is, uh, uh, you know, having our own airlines is really great, you know? Yes. Hawaiian Airlines, I mean, they, they, mm -hmm. they figured it out for us and how to manage to split the poundage right. up between different people. Yeah. And was able to get, say, oh, no, 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 we'll, we'll definitely. So I just want to give a plug in for Hawaiian yeah. Airlines for, helping on yes. all kind of occasions, just not mm -hmm. what we had. I've heard other occasions that Hawaiian Airlines, you know, helping our community, right. and not only locally, but mm -hmm. nationally and internationally. Yes. You know, and now, you know, Hawaiian Airlines coming with a new fleet of airlines and mm -hmm. hiring like 200 or 300 yeah. new employees. Right. And so it's really great that mm -hmm. our own airlines, Hawaiian Airlines, yeah. growing in the world. Totally so, agree. And I'm really grateful yeah. Hawaiian Airlines helping me that evening when we spoke to them at Hokulea, because mm -hmm. they were the sponsor of Hokulea, right. but also managing to split up their way. So how did you get Lea of Aloha to yeah. France? So with all the media coverage, and this was during Thanksgiving Day week, so we were reaching out to the consulate in France, the embassy, and everybody was going home for the holidays, coming back to the States. And so um, the people we did get to talk to, the French locals, the Parisians, they didn't understand the concept of lay. When we were trying to explain we have a one mile long lay, they thought we were bringing food up there. You know, they <laughs> thought it was a dish. But uh, so basically what happened is because of all the media attention that we received, um, it was finally the Hawaii's Tourist um, Bureau or Visitor Bureau. Um, in Oahu, George Segetti, the director, had called Hawaii us. Hawaii Tourism Authority. Hawaii, th thank you, Tourism Authority, thank you. So it was George Segetti that gave us a call, a shout out, and said, what the hell are you guys doing in Maui <laughs> with those words? <laughs> I'll never forget it. And uh, I explained to him, and George, you know, we just felt this compassion for Paris, and we wanted to reach out and give them a hug from Hawaii. And he was just overwhelmed. He said, this is incredible, and it, it really re represents aloha in a real true fashion, and it represents everybody in Hawaii. We need to assist. So he goes, what do you need? And I said, we're still trying to figure out the logistics and getting a lay to Paris. So he said, I'll call you back. And then 15 minutes later, I got a call from United Airlines' Quentin Chalk, who's a GM based in Honolulu. United. Awesome. Yeah, and so they stepped up to the plate and said, will you be ready in 10 hours? We have a flight that's leaving and uh, you can jump aboard that. So they flew our delegation, Tim Lara, Sherry Austin, myself. Your wife went and accompanied and my, Sandy. Yeah, I, I needed her, so I, I, we bought my wife a ticket because I couldn't do it Well, by, Sandy's by our first yeah. lady of Le Aloha. Yeah, she is, yes she is. So By then I was an emotional wreck because of all the beauty that I, and it took three and a half days to complete the lay from eight o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. People just kept coming. The teas just kept coming. And uh, you know, people were hugging, embracing each other. Some kapunas would come and they said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm too old to sit on the floor and weave, but I just wanted to come and give you folks a hug and mahalo well, you. I tell you, I, so. I remember the call out you wanted for tea leaves and I yeah. said, Ron will be there. <laughs> And I just want uh, right. uh, to say, Kathy O'Connor, mahalo yes. her Big in time. Haiku. Yes. And uh, she has half acre of tea leaf and 
Mm-hmm. He let us go and harvest yeah. that for the lay of Aloha yeah. and made it possible for us to complete mm-hmm. that. Yeah. But uh, there was a other situation as you went along. Mm-hmm. As, 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 as you had more questions than answers, the other question is that you were not allowed to take anything out because of uh, immigration <laughs> inspection and everything. Right. And so you were, you were caught off for another thing. Let's get a hold of the security. Let's yeah. get a hold Customs. of this guy. And yes. we couldn't get a hold of that. Couldn't and get so in touch with anybody. E- explain what happened on the flight, the relationship yeah. between the attendants, the yeah. captain, the co-captain, mm-hmm. and the yeah. Lay of Aloha committee. Yeah. No, you're right, Kimo Keo. And again, it is a core just working and, you know, and, and showing us the way. It was almost to a point where, you know, we were just hanging on and, and hanging on for the ride. We're right. in the back seat of this vehicle. And uh, it was just amazing to be there and witness this firsthand. But, um, you know, we had seven huge boxes, big, huge boxes to take to Paris. And this is a country that just got violated. They, you know, they're under, you know, the highest alert right now for security. Yeah. So, um, you know, but we just felt as we as we were still in Maui, we were making calls across the way because we but, wanted to get clearance for this tea leaf. Yeah, so I wanted through. to say that we have limited time. And yeah. so I think that yeah. what happened, you met the pilot on the board and the yeah, captain. Yeah, yeah said, I can mm-hmm. get you true, yeah. and the captain got you true, and they got yeah. the, the lady to France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you guys got it yes. there. And I understand that the Hyatt in mm-hmm. France or Paris yes. supported you guys. Yes, you exactly. Know? And so mahalo to that. Yes. And so I want to speed forward uh, because of the time mm-hmm. limit. Okay. Sure. And uh, I want to say that uh, there were several layers of Aloha. Yes. So there was one layer of Aloha for Paris. And then Orlando. And the other one, Orlando. Mm-hmm. And the for other the one. Pulse Nightclub. And then we did one for Washington, D.C., the Maui Charter School kids. We're invited to this program where all right. the kids across the country, and so they presented one for the ladies' march in in Washington D.C. And D. then C. just recently we made a, a lay for Vegas. Yeah. And then the Hokulea before. The Hokulea. And then the Vegas. Pacific Cancer Foundation. Paddle for Life. Yes, Paddle and for Life. You just returned back from from Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yes, so I want to kind of speed that up to okay, Las Vegas. Sure. And so here we are now in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and uh, it was almost like. Make a lay for Paddle for Life, and then we got the call. Right. In the, in just about ended mm-hmm. making a lay for the island of Lanai to present to the people. You got the call before we finished the lay, and now yeah. everybody got to make a one mile lay for Vegas. Right, exactly. You know? And yeah. uh, so you got the call, mm-hmm. and I want to uh, shout out to Elizabeth and Kavika who yes. kind of steered that because we left them. Mm-hmm. We're gone. We're going away right. to Lanai. Right, right. But you just mm-hmm. returned back, so share with us in the, uh, the next yeah. five or ten minutes, six yeah, minutes we sure. have about the Lea of Aloha in Vegas. And again, Kavika, Sabato, and Elizabeth Fellows, I mean, they've been committed to this lay from day one as well, and just like a few others. So it wasn't like they just came up with Las Vegas. They've been pretty much with every lay of the way. But on going back to Las Vegas, yeah, as we went to Lanai to do the Paddle for Life, Kavika and Elizabeth kept everything going. And um, so we were getting re- uh, outreaches from all over. You know, Kauai got in touch with us, said, we're in, we want to do a portion of LA, Oahu, and also Kona. And not just here in the state of Hawaii, but California felt the pain, and they felt the connection as well. They saw the Lay of Aloha on social media. So they had called and said, we need to do something. We want to be part of this. That's great. Yeah, but because limited, uh, you know, no resources of teas or flowers, they came up with the letters of love. Awesome. Yeah. So in four days, they had put it out there, and in four days, they raised 700 little cards with people's wishes. Unbelievable. Yeah, from Alaska, from Minnesota, from all over the country, all sent to California, and this lady and her friends and her family laminated each card, punched little holes in it, and then attached a little string so that we could tie them to the lay. And that was powerful in itself. Just amazing what Aloha does. Amazing. You know. it's but spread. I know that we were there to do a blessing with... Uh, Lehua, is that yes, name? Uh-huh. And Thank so, you know, shout out to her, uh, Mahalo, because she went to Orlando. Yes. And, uh, you know, she had, she had a lot of questions and answers came as you guys moved along. Yes, they did. But uh, Lehua just did a beautiful thing and out there and people from the Mandalay Hotel, I said, I'll reach to you guys, you know, or would you guys come and um, bless our hotel oh, yeah. to where the shooter was at, I, right. I assume, you know? Yes. And yeah. uh, so tell us about that, what happened with the Mandalay. How did they get yeah. a hold of you? Yeah. So. Again, this, this lay turned from a mile long to two miles long, and then also uh, adorned with 700 cards from all over the country. So when we got up there, you know, the first day we went to the different memorials. There's, uh, there's two main memorials on the Strip, where Welcome to Las Vegas is, 
and there's 58 crosses there with each individual's name, that soul that was lost at that, of that tragic event. And then there's the healing garden. So we went to the different uh, memorials, but when we were at the Strip, we kept looking at Mandalay Bay. It was right across the way, and we could feel this energy, and we felt like we had to reach out to him. And so the next morning, we got a call from uh, one of the executive office officers up there, and they had shared with us about the pain they were going through and the, the employees, what they were feeling. It was, it was, you know, it was very difficult. It is a very difficult time for them right now. So we offered, we said, we, you know, we, we're not here to push anything on anybody. You know, we want to be very respectful. But if you like, we would like to offer a blessing and a portion of the lay to go to Mandalay Bay to help with the healing. And, uh, you know, tell you the truth, he broke down three different times on the phone. Wow. He had to excuse himself and said, I'm sorry, I have to collect myself. And then he was able to, to go forward. And he says, you don't know how much this means to us. Our, our employees need healing right now. It, you know. yeah. so, so what I understand, uh, you were there much longer now than mm -hmm. the other lay of Aloha. Yeah. You were there a couple of days. Now you, yes. you got there and uh, you went to Honolulu first, joined up lays there, blessed those lays yes. at Honolulu. And then you guys all flew up to Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Yes. And then uh, I understand that there were eight sections of the lay mm -hmm. and there were different sections put at different yeah. places. Yeah, there was actually 16 sections when we were, because it's a two mile long lay. Right. Normally it would be eight sections. So 16 sections. So this time, eight of, we do eight the sections in eighths of a mile, but because it was two miles, it was 16. And for the first time, all the lays came together in Honolulu and they were connected, you know, oh. as one. It was pretty powerful. Yes. And then when we got to Las Vegas, then we divided the lays as we needed uh, into three different memorial sites. Oh, cool. Yeah, the Strip, Mandalay Bay, and the Healing Garden. Yeah. So there was one, one Hawaii person that was uh, in that. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the Hawaii person over there, more than one? There are so many Hawaii people there. No, yes. the one that was, uh, was a victim of what a tragic had happened in Las Vegas. Yeah, so she was part of the Letters of Love group. And she, um, she had a hard time. She didn't know if she would be able to go back to Vegas again, but she ended up showing for the blessing. And uh, you could see the, 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 the healing happening in her. So the one but, victim we had mm -hmm. from Hawaii was Nomura? Oh, Nomura? Well, there was a girl that died yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tragic up there. Oh, I, I didn't hear that part. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. So Sorry. the girl that went with you, Nomura, yeah, who was that? Okay, that's Colleen Nomura. Oh, Colleen. Yes, okay. uh-huh. And she was a representative from Honolulu. Okay, I, I, I misunderstood yeah, that. Yeah. And so she was the representative from Oahu. Yes, exactly. She was one of the organizers for the lay in Oahu. And then there was Cirilla uh, Saika, who was the organizer in Kauai. And wow. Then, yeah. You know, so... I think that uh, you go to summarize some of the lays. So the first lay of Aloha to Paris. Mm -hmm. Yes. The second was what, to where? Second one was to Orlando. And the third? The third one went to Washington, D.C. And that was to support the, the lady from Hana who started the, the rights yes. for women. That was powerful, and, yes. You know, I, wish I, I wish I knew her name. And, and, yes. You know, but uh, mm -hmm. excuse me if I, I don't remember the name, but we really mahalo you for that, yeah. what you did in Washington. And you yeah. continue to do for the women, you know? Yes. And then you, after that, you went to where? And then after that was Hokalea. Oh, down and in Oahu. Paddle for Life. Yeah, yeah, that was really amazing, Hokalea, where um, Nino Thompson just yeah. was there to, to get yeah. the lay with Again, us. Again, the magic said. continued. And he was so appreciative, Ron, and yeah. he sends his aloha every time for yeah, that. Right on. And after Hokalea? And then Hokalea Pacific Paddle Foundation. Paddle for Nai. Life. Paddle for Life. Paddle for uh -huh. Life, ninth, ninth annual with Pacific mm -hmm. Cancer Foundation. Okay. Um, and uh, they had an incredible goal, Ron, of mm -hmm. 175,000. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be awesome. talking. We're going to be talking the next half of the show mm -hmm. with uh, Nancy uh, uh, Lojoy, who is uh, the executive director for Pacific Cancer Foundation yeah. on Maui. So, and then we went to then uh, finally to Las Vegas. To Vegas. The healing was definitely, you know, felt there. There's there's a big um, population of Hawaiians there. 300,000. Yeah. Oh, I've heard over 300,000. Yeah. So um, but it's, that's amazing. Yeah. If you had a, uh, a minute to spare mm -hmm. about Lea Valhoa, what can you describe of Lea Valhoa for all the locations? But what was the general common thing that uh, came upon you? But if you had a minute, what would you say of Lea Valhoa? Uh, you know, it's just a, a powerful representation of, of Aloha, people going out of their way. Uh, for, for a group of people they don't even know. You know, that's the true meaning of aloha. It's awesome. giving. And, but I also know that 
you receive a resolution from the governor, and the governor yes. came here to present that resolution. Yeah. And yeah. when was that? When was that? Uh, he, he's done it for every lay. Uh, oh. Well, at least at least the Paris lay, the Orlando lay. Um, you know, we received a proclam proclamation from the governor. Yeah, so we want to thank mm -hmm. Governor Iggy. Yes. We want to thank Hawaii Tourism Authority. Yes. We want to thank mm -hmm. everybody who has something to do with the Lea Valoa. Yeah. Maui, Oahu, Kauai, yeah. everybody, we want to send a big mahalo run. Yeah. And we want to mahalo everybody up in the mainland who got involved. And mm -hmm. we really yes, send our truly. aloha and our, our share, our love to the Ohana in Vegas, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we wish that we brought some kind of healing, um, and I think this is gonna take a lot, but we appreciate that. Yes. But uh, I wanna say, Ron, thank you for coming to the yeah. Kimokeo Foundation thank show. You, Kimokeo. We wanna thank Maui Causes, mm -hmm. and we wanna thank the, the, the production companies, Maui Causes, the director is Sam Small, mm -hmm. and yes. Akaku Community Television, mm -hmm. and uh, we really appreciate uh, the Ohana of Lea Baloha, and yeah. I, I know you know my next guest, which is mm -hmm. Nancy from Paddle for Life for Pacific Cancer Foundation, and we appreciate Nalu's for six years mm -hmm. s servicing us with the food, plus paddling over there. So, Ron, Great event. Ponzo, to the, and First Lady uh, mm -hmm. of Lea Baloha, Sandy. Yes. We really appreciate what yeah. you guys sacrificed as Ohana, yes. and uh, sacrifice of being able to do this. Yeah. And, and we say that, great, mahalo, yeah. and well, give them the, yeah, the call that we usually say to each other around. What is that? Siu. Chu. Siu. Aloha. Aloha. This program is a joint production of the Kimo Keo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowd-funded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at MauiCauses.org. Aloha. Welcome to the second half of the Kimokeo Foundation Talk Story Show. And the first half was a really great one, and I got to tell you, this second half is just as exciting. Usually most of the people that um, get involved with me have one of the things to say that uh, be careful of Kim Kel because uh, there's a lot of work to be done. And there was a lot of work done in this special event that we have. I'd like to introduce to you my special guest, my friend. And uh, she can tell you of all these things that we do together. And she can tell you how close we are because we have to be on the phone communicating at many times for this special event. Let me introduce to you my guest, Nancy LaJoy, the executive director of Pacific Cancer Foundation, Maui. Nancy, how are you today? I'm good, thanks for having me here. Yeah, glad you know, to I, be here. I, I'm glad, you, glad to be here. I know you was uh, advised to come here in uh, uh, the last uh, uh, one hour, I think? 30 you know, seconds, and, yeah. <laughs> and so, but really appreciate you being here. You know, Nancy, we, um, we had done uh, our ninth annual for Paddle for Life beneficiary uh, Pacific Cancer Foundation and uh, can you share with us um, our ninth annual, or I think first you should share with us who is Pacific Cancer Foundation? What does Pacific Cancer Foundation and for whom do they serve on Maui with Lanai and Molokai? Well, Pacific Cancer Foundation serves just Maui County and what we do is provide free support services for Maui's cancer community. So that includes islands of Lanai, Molokai and Lanai and all the cancer patients, survivors, and supporters, their families, and their ohanas on those islands. How do we serve um, Lanai and Molokai? How do we serve them? Because they're not like we, we have a satellite office in Paia, and we do uh, we services. We offer services at uh, the YMCA. We offer services when we do programs at UH Maui, University of Hawaii Maui. So how do we service uh, the Lanai and um, Molokai? Well, our main offices are up at uh, the hospital here in Maui. We have mm -hmm. three staff that work up there. We have a, a patient navigator, a patient care coordinator, coordinator, and we have our registered dietitian, nutritionist. And they provide services that um, cancer patients wouldn't normally be eligible for with their insurance and their benefits. And so they help guide people and support people who are diagnosed. 
on the outer islands, it's a little bit different. On Molokai at the hospital there, they do have a patient navigator, so we work with that navigator to support their patients there. We send them um, insure, educational materials, um, prosthetics, things that they need. We also support them when their patients come to Maui for treatment. Um, typically, people from Molokai or Lanai have to go to Oahu for treatment, but a lot of them like to come here because they might have family or friends here, or they have more support system here. So, but when those people come here, they still need a lot of help from Pacific Cancer Foundation. That's great. And um, we, um, um, I'm the founder of uh, the Paddle for Life, the beneficiaries Pacific Cancer Foundation. We started nine years ago, and, uh, and it was about the patient navigator. At that time, we had only one patient navigator at the uh, Maui Memorial Hospital. Today, it's called, what's the name of the new hospital now? Well, it's uh, still Maui Memorial Medical Center. Um, it's managed by Kaiser now, mm -hmm. Kaiser Permanente, and it's Maui Healthcare Systems um, managing that, so. And nine years later, we have, uh, we have three people now working up there. We have three people. And then in the, in, the, in the office, we used to have just one person. And that was, at that time, was Jeff Scharnhorst. Right. And now uh, yourself, which is uh, in there, and now we have um, how many staff members there? Well, we have in our administrative offices, which are down at the Cameron Center, um, we have myself as the executive director, um, Annie uh, Joya is our development coordinator, and Natalia Rogers is our administrative assistant. And there's Jackie in there. And Jackie, uh, who is a student at UH Maui. She, internship. Um, she's doing an uh, internship, and she comes in part-time when she's not taking classes and works with us. So that's really great. We've grown. Um, with the services and with the needs of our ohana, you know. And so, and, but you know, um, just recently, a couple years now, we have a new team on board that's helping us. I mean, both of us are wearing the Paddle for Life pink shirt. So tell us a little bit uh, about these other shirts. You know, I have the uh, Maui Police Department, yep. Go Pink 5-0. I've got the Fire Department yeah. shirt here. And then you have the Fire Department and uh, um, they've been doing this. The fire department started this originally, and uh, who was responsible for the Go Pink shirt? So originally the fire department kind of started this campaign as a grassroots effort. Um, I think one of the firemen started in their garage, and they were printing shirts and uh, donating the money to Susan Komen Foundation mm -hmm. um, during the month of October. Um, and the campaign kind of took off and grew. And uh, within the last couple of years, the fire department decided to challenge the police department mm -hmm. to see who would sell the most pink shirts. Um, and at that time, the Pacific Cancer Foundation was lucky enough to become the beneficiary of that campaign, um, which has really grown. Um, the fire department wears the pink shirts as part of their uniform during the month of October. So a lot of times you'll see firemen riding around in the trucks. I just recently seen town. them going by with the, that. But they, uh, they're the one that started this. And that was Chief Murray and Chief his Murray, department. Yes, yes. And then now we have the. Um, and now we have the police shirts also. And the chief name is? Chief Tivo um, is a great supporter of the right. Go Pink campaign. And uh, several of his officers. Um, Kamu, Sergeant Sang, um, Sergeant Paul, they're all just doing a great job. The police. Yeah, so they had Chief Mary, and now we have Chief Tivo. Chief Tivo. And then uh, that's a go pink shirt, and uh, now they have a they have a they have a battle their badges to introduce the go pink shirt. They do a softball game, they and have a softball uh, this game. year the police department took home the championship trophy for the first time. For the first time. So that was a great five game. Oh, five oh getting physically strong and <laughs> physically uh, hip, and they won the 2017 game battle of the Badgers. That's right. And then, but you know, the shirts are for sale, right? The shirts and are twenty five dollars. And how much is that? Uh, the shirts are twenty dollars. Right. Sorry. And they're at they're at all of our uh, fire department stations. They're at all the fire departments and all the police departments at the Pacific Cancer Foundation offices and online on the Pacific Cancer Foundation website. But we uh, um, just recently, last Friday, um, was joined by the Go Pink shirts with the County of Maui. That's right. And Mayor Alan Akara, this is his second year 
in joining the Go Pink shirt. Is it correct? That's right. And the mayor um, issued a proclamation for us last week, last Friday, um, declaring October Go Pink Month in support of Pacific Cancer Foundation, breast cancer awareness, uh, really all cancer awareness. Yeah, so we want to thank Ellen Arakawa uh, for coming on board with the Go Pink and uh, so they can get a shirt at the County of Maui. And we want to thank uh, Chief Murray and Chief Devo. Sure. Chief Murray with the Maui Fire Department. Yes. And Chief Devo with the Maui Police Department. Yes. So, uh, we really thank them and uh, of, of their efforts of uh, all of this because they do a wonderful job in raising funds for Pacific Cancer Foundation. Yes, you know. great to see those guys all wearing their pink. Great to see you wearing your pink Paddle for Life too. Yeah, so you know, let's go back to Paddle for Life. So you want to share that with us about Paddle for Life? I mean, I, I shared a little bit and, uh, and uh, so you share with uh, our community uh, what we did and why we did it, for whom we did it. Sure. Well, this was our ninth annual Paddle for Life, which you know you and I work very closely on, and I really appreciate your support. But this is an amazing event that reaches far out, um, not only through Maui, but all of Hawaii and on the mainland as well. And uh, this year we took over 400 cancer patients, survivors, and supporters in six-man outrigger canoes over to Lanai for the weekend. So we left Lahaina on Saturday morning, we, um, we had a beautiful blessing over there with all of our uh, people involved. We paddled the canoes over to um, Lanai where we spent the night. Um, Ron from Nalu's was amazing, cooked up a fabulous dinner. Hapa played music that night. Um, it, it's an amazing experience of strength and support and encouragement for all these folks. Um, and then we paddled back the next day. But people came from, paddled all the different islands from oh, two teams from Oahu, two teams from the Big Island. We had some paddlers from Kauai. Uh, we had a club from Canada. We had people from Washington, California, Colorado, um, Georgia, Idaho, all over um, Arizona, Texas, um, England, Germany, we had France, we had paddlers from all over, so it was pretty amazing. Yeah, we experience. had some paddlers from Lejinsky, Lejinsky, it was like, a, how, do you, how do you pronounce that country? It, well, it was in France, it was yeah. a town in France, right. and, uh, and those folks were great. They are um, base jumpers, you know, they're adrenaline junkies, and they came to do this event, and, uh, you know, we appreciate their support, so. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate for the the, the founders who was with us in the beginning, and I really want to give a shout out to Mano Olana, you know, um, Kei Canoe Club, um, Laula, all of the clubs participated. Uh, we can start with the with the North Clubs, Hawaiian Canoe Club, Nakai Valo, uh, Laula, and then you can start with the South Wailea Canoe Club, Kei Canoe Club, uh, Maui Canoe Club, and Mano Olana. Right. And you can go to the West, you know, Napili, Lahaina and Kahana. So all of the clubs have supported us uh, with uh, this uh, Paddle for Life and so we are really indebted to them to loaning us the canoes, um, uh, being able to lend us the places to rig or um, de-rig. You know, we, get, we took 25 uh, teams this year. So the, the, can you tell us a little bit about the teams, how the teams got involved and what they had to do to be on this thing because we're still in the, in the month of October and we're still fundraising for Paddle for Life, and we're asking the community to continue to do that. So if someone wanted to paddle, they gave a call to you, and what did the staff do? So uh, um, basically we had 25 canoes out there in the ocean, and each of them was manned by a team of people. Um, anyone who wanted to have a team, they were either sponsored by someone or they put their own team together. Most of them were sponsored by a business or an organization or a canoe club. Um, people could go online to our website and sign up and it was it operates kind of like a, a, a relay for life or a walk-a-thon um, where so the sponsorship was like they, they had different levels you know the right. paddler themselves had a level and so they, so name the sponsorship that we, we had asked for them you know so um, businesses paid either um, a five thousand dollar sponsorship or a twenty five hundred dollar sponsorship thousand dollars and then the paddlers raised a minimum of $200 to participate. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of paddlers raised much, much more than that. Some of them raised several thousand dollars. I think our highest paddler raised about over $4,000. Um, 
Um, and many of our teams raised well over ten thousand dollars collectively as a group. That's amazing. So pretty amazing. Yeah. But we had uh, we had some corporate teams involved this year. We did. And uh, you know SGS, the landscaping company out of the West Side, or they just totally S around the island. Yep. And then we had a real estate company, Equity One, that was uh, uh, skipping Alicia. Alicia uh, Sparkman, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we've had uh, people like the canoe clubs throughout the years been participating, and they raised number of monies, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sort of like Nakai Valo, they had two teams, uh, Hawaiian Paddle Sports, Team Amelia. Uh, the Weston came Chucky, on board team, this year. Uh, what, what they called, Team Chucker. Uh, rides Trucker again. Rides with us. Trucker yep. Rides with us. Yep, Lauren Spaulding and, and that team. Lauren Spaulding and then uh, JB, Team Amelia. Mm -hmm. And then Hawaiian Paddle Sports this year uh, supported uh, by joining up with Hawaiian Big Island. Yep. They had, uh, they had a few teams, so we was able to join that up, you know? Sure. Kind of thing. So we really appreciate uh, those guys that uh, been with us. And, you know, one of the biggest supporters that have been with us since day one it's called Safeway Foundation. Safeway. So can you share a little bit the history of the Safeway Foundation and how they um, you know, do that and how they manage to fund us uh, every year, you know? So every year the Safeway Foundation, um, you know, when you check out, you buy your groceries at Safeway, when you check out on the credit card machine and it says, would you like to support breast cancer? Um, and if you push that button, then all those funds that they collect go into their corporate offices and... Oh, it's like a reward, yeah? It's, yeah. Like a reward program. Well, it's a, yeah, an option But also to I think uh, the management team we have here in Kihei we started with, um, they themselves have on their staff cancer survivors. That's right. The and I think those ladies um, really know what it meant about the services for Pacific Cancer Foundation and wanted to be on board. And so we really created the management team there that made it possible for us to be a beneficiary, you know, for nine years. Yeah, know. we really couldn't do it without the Safeway Foundation. I mean, they're kind of our bottom ground foundation of support. Um, they really get us going each year, um, get our program off the ground. And, you know, a lot of that money goes for Paddle for Life, then comes right back into direct services that we provide for our clients. So it goes right back to the people in Maui County who need it. Yeah, so there was a little difference about this year, though. Uh, I think on some of the canoes, uh, especially uh, Lawrence Spalding and Team Amelia, um, they had a lot of little kids with them. And, uh, and then also Team Jadian. So they had a, you know, Team Emilia is a, a, a story of itself uh, of what happened to JB's wife and how he supports that and how now his children. And they have a foundation. Do you know about their foundation, Emilia Foundation? I don't. And their foundation is to help children like JB's children to understand what had happened with cancer. Oh, I do. That, um, that, what, um, Oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm blanking on the name. Um, Amelia Okeke. Yeah, Amelia Okeke. Yes, um, and what they do is they provide support services um, after somebody has lost a parent to cancer, a support group for the children. Um, and they do a really great job. They have office at the Cameron Center there. So yes. that's JB's mom. That's um, JB's mom. That who and so we really, that really thank her. Yes, and she does a great job. JB, She's really JB dedicated. himself raised thousands and thousands of dollars for us on the call out and he did an amazing job but this year I was able to um, go by with the uh, the film crew boat and see his daughter paddling you know and uh, she just was paddling away so we had uh, the youngest I think was five and now six and same with his daughter we were talking about that one child that we celebrated her birthday that and, was uh, little Indy Forbes. And, and what's that? That was little Indy Forbes. And what was the dad's name? Uh, his name was Frank. Yes. And they paddled together. They on both paddled on Team Jadian. Yes. And uh, that was, uh, you know, my fiance, um, Rin, you know, Hughes. And, but uh, there was a story they came with that, um, with that child and the father. Um, so, can you explain to us the, what the story was about? I can. Indy um, has a little brother who, when he was six months old, um, they found a tumor in his eye. And he's been going once a month to get treatment on the mainland all the way in Philadelphia 
um, to a place called Will's Eye Center, and um, we've helped support that family on their journey. Um, they've had some very great news recently in that um, Sully's tumor is now very minimal, um, gone to remission. And uh, so Indy and her dad wanted to paddle in Paddle for Life to support their little brother Sully and their son Sully. And mom and Sully rode over to Lanai on the ferry and met, um, met Indy and her dad, Frank, over there. And they had well, an amazing experience. Yeah, so I asked you to share that because when we got the story, you know, as paddlers, you know, having such a child in our boat is, uh, you know, was not a really common thing, you know. So, you know, when shared with me, you know, I have a six-year-old child, you know, what, what, what are we going to do with that, you know? And the father is, you know, insisting on this, insisting on that, you know? And he, he was rightfully, you know, asking to, for us to support him and the daughter for his son. And we didn't get a clear view until we uh, shared the story amongst that and, you know, and what you say. You know, so it was like almost like having a pineapple in our throat after we found out the real story. Right. And, uh, so I mentioned that because we had a, a few little ones on there, you know? We yeah. had 14 kids on our paddle this year. 14 kids. Yes, and all of them had a connection with cancer one way or another. Um, and it's amazing to see these little people, you know, all of them, you know, 10, 12 years old and younger. Um, and, and how sad it is that they already in their young lives had to have a connection with cancer. Um, something you hope to protect kids from, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that, you know, but it also was great that they were all able to come together um, and, and be a part of this experience and awesome. have that fun time on Lanai camping with their friends and with all these other paddlers. It was a yes. really great experience. Yes, for so them. each of the paddlers donated $200 to, to be on this ride, and then the sponsors were able to give what they wanted to give, you know. And then uh, also there were other sponsors, sponsoring escort both, sponsoring teams, and some of them like, you know, um, Nalu's, you know. We had Nalu's. So Nalu's um, had a real array of menu for dinner, and uh, so. Sure, and Pal Vodka is a, a great supporter of this event too, and they help sponsor uh, our lunch on Sunday for our paddlers. They also do a great campaign during the month of October where they put, print all their labels in pink um, and then the proceeds from those sales go back to Pacific Cancer well, we Foundation. Had, um, was that uh, Kahana, Dottie's at Kahana that did our lunch the first day? Oh, Dolly's Cafe. Dolly's in, Cafe. Uh, in and a, the Beach uh, House yeah. out So just Kahana. great that, you know, the, the corporate people can jump in down to support that and uh, be able to um, so support us on that because it was, it's a great need for us to have there. But this year was something special. I think this was special this year. And... Uh, that when we had um, gathered up the, all the logistics, one of the things that was added, and we want to thank her, and we got a few people to thank. First, Pua from Bank of Hawaii, the branch manager for- uh, In Lanai, she Pui, was amazing. Uh, team Lanai, and got, got us to, you know, early in the season, we have to meet with Huolopo'e Beach Association to get the permit. Mm -hmm. We want to thank Paul Sinsano with the State of Harbor Paul Division. Is fabulous. We yeah. definitely want to thank Pulama for setting up the tent, giving us the ice, setting up the barbecue. Um, Kapua, um, Dale on Lanai, setting up the sound system. That's right. And shout out to Barry and uh, Eric. Eric Gilliam. You know, help us to play for us that night. They, they, the crowd went wild. That was awesome. They went wild. That was the crowd so went great. Wild that yeah. Night, you know? And the boys from um, the boys from uh, the KA KA Charter, School, Charter School who, who got the, up and danced. Did the hula hula dance. That was amazing. You know? But really, um, every one of them did top us off. But the big top guy, everybody equally. But Nalus came with a fabulous menu and did a did an array of uh, dish. Did, can you explain the dish we had with a? Ron is so great. First of all, just to start with um, him building the lay of aloha for us. Yeah. You know, that was a whole project oh, the week project. before. And, yeah, so, you know, it, so this year's protocol was so to hard. do the one mile lay and to present to Kappa and Mali on the island, who is the vice president of culture uh, for Pulama, but more so just himself and his wife and his staff for meeting us with the, to greet and take the one mile lay, you know. And uh, 
we took over poi and we took over taro mm -hmm. to share with the kupuna and uh, it was really so we really have the shout out the big mahalo to the the people of lanai you know we really couldn't do it without them they help us in so many ways get set up over there the four seasons donates all the tables and chairs um, and, you but know. this year's special was uh, uh, Roberta Di Chatley. She's uh, with, worked with the Chamber of the Commerce Chamber of, of Lanai yep. and was able to uh, get us very vans to take us up to town. A big thanks to Saul Kahikolo with MEO. And, and Gail Allen for helping us with the housing. And, oh, know. that was amazing. We had like 159 people up there. And for Kepa and his staff to open up the uh, Lanai Culture and Heritage Center was a real blowout up there and the people in town. But if you had one minute, Nancy, what would you say Paddle for Life 2017 did for our community? I think that Paddle for Life is so much more than a fundraiser because it's really the experience of all these cancer patients and survivors and supporters coming together um, sharing each other's stories, um, sharing aloha, being part of this amazing experience, the challenge of crossing and getting to the other side. Um, all those things together um, are really hard to put into words because it's just a powerful message internally with all of that that happens. So you set a goal this year. What was the goal? The goal was that we were going to raise $175,000. And as of today, what did you guys raise? We're just over 170,000, so we're so just So you feel that you'll make 000. the goal? Nancy? I hope so. I hope that yeah. we can rally in the next couple of weeks and, and get that extra 5,000 in to reach our goal. Yeah. Well, I really want to thank you, Nancy LaJoy, uh, Executive Director for Pacific Cancer Foundation for being on the Kimo Kiel Foundation show, produced by Maui Causes. Our director is uh, small, you know, and uh, I really appreciate uh, Akaku Community Television. And we want to give a great shout and say, Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you. Aloha. This program is a joint production of the Kimo Keo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowdfunded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at MauiCauses.org. <laughs>